Hello, garden people. I am, we have a lot to do today. So I came out this morning um, <clears throat> just to open up the greenhouse. It is still a learning experience for me. Um, as of right now, it says that it is 70 degrees in the greenhouse, which is great, but uh, it's gonna get pretty hot and I don't want them to get too hot. I'm gonna move them out a little bit later um, when the sun is on this side. Let me put this in front of it. <clears throat> I haven't quite figured out the door. Um, we get some winds in this area, so I haven't quite figured out the door. So there's so much that is happening. There's life in the garden and I'm so excited. I can't express. And first I wanna start off by saying that like, this is the time, this is the time when I get a little tricked. Um, I say that because I am checking every single day the temperatures at night and I am trying to figure out exactly when I can put my plants out. There's a rule of thumb here where like you don't put your plants, you don't put your tomatoes out till Mother's Day. I actually don't know when that is because we don't do Mother's Day. I should, right? But um, I just always watch the forecast because I want to put them out as early as I possibly can so I can start eating them as early as I possibly can. So I have been watching it like a hawk. My estimated last frost date isn't until um, the 19th of April which is still a week and a half out from where we are now. But every single temperature is above 46 degrees except for one night, which is 45. It might be the gamble that I take this year. And hopefully it, it won't get down to 30, but if it were to get a little closer to frost, maybe I could like do something. But I, I kind of feel and believe that it's, it's almost over. Um, that spring is here, that our warmer weather is coming. And to the point where we've started putting up trellises, um, this is our bean trellis behind me. It's gonna be a bean arch. We've never had arches. It's our new thing this year. We're trying it. We don't know. Um, <clears throat> and then back here, I have our old bean trellis. My husband's made these before. He's gonna fix the crossbar today. It's a little bit different spacing than we've had in the past. And then I'm also planting, as you know, from previous videos, some fancy gourds and some decorative things. Um, <clears throat> so that's going to be on this arch here. And I've supported them with tree stakes. And then I've also wrapped twine around. This is my pea trellis. Got my peas around. I've got beets in front to help with the nitrogen and the different minerals that they need from each other. So that's my first companion planting of the season. I'm very excited. Then I kind of planted my broccoli in the wrong spot. They're supposed to go in the slim shady bed, but I left my Brussels sprouts there over winter and I was like, oh, this will be great. And it was great. It was great until it got to be 80 degrees for like three days, almost straight, and they bolted. So I didn't get the Brussels sprouts I tenderly cared for over winter because it got too hot too fast. And then, and now we're back to like 50, 50, 60 degrees. Well, really 60 degrees during the day, but I was so sad. So now my broccoli is in the wrong spot, but hopefully the ones that are under the cucumber trellis will be fine because they'll also get a little shade from the cucumbers after I put them in. But I might actually have to sacrifice one of the broccolis. I don't know. I've never been good at broccoli anyway, but I still feel sad. So here's our cucumber trellis that we built. Um, we, I restrung it the other day. Um, so the cucumbers are just down there and they vine up this like crazy. This side is gonna have gherkins, gherkin cucumbers that are gonna grow up this side of this arch here. And then this <clears throat> side here is gonna have the fancy gourds um, that are gonna grow up this side. I haven't decided whether I'm going to do um, my jacky little pumpkins up here or if i'm going to plant them against the fence and just let it kind of like fence in our bottom place where our children play um <clears throat> which is just down here in this corner that's like their little hideaway so i might i might do that because it doesn't get any sun down there so i can't plant anything down there for them like a pea 
TP or anything like that. And then my green stock. Uh, let me just talk about this for a second. Not affiliated, but in completely in love. I've wanted one for a long time. And it just seems like everybody has one and everybody loves it and does so well with it. So I was like, you know what? I'm going, I'm going to try it. I'm going to do it. And so my husband actually got some starts for us because I had planted everything just for my bed space. And now I have more vertical space and I'm super excited. So we planted romaine lettuce. He got me these pansies because I was like, get me something beautiful. And he did. Hi, little dove. Little dove just literally like plopped down right next to me and now it's, now it's gone. Um, <clears throat> so this is the green stock. It has a self contained watering system. I planted some with seeds. We'll see how they do. I see a little seedling coming up here um, <clears throat> before I like get worried. But you essentially <clears throat> stack each of these sections with <clears throat> high quality potting mix. So we got the best high quality organic potting mix that we could. And um, then we planted them out and then we piled them on top of each other. There is a water reservoir between each layer that helps to disperse that you have to line up. Um, there's a lot of different like how to install videos of the green stock that I watched. Um, this is the leaf stock version. So it is much shorter in its depth of pocket, but there are 42 pockets, which means 42 new places for me to put plants. And my brain is like exploding because I didn't plan for it and I have it. And my mom also got me hydroponics for Christmas and I haven't figured that out yet because now is the time of year that is busy. And it's busy because we're setting up all the stuff for our plants. We're finishing building boxes like these guys. My husband built those yesterday for my roses. And we're getting all the stuff ready for the plants to go in the ground. Oh, I just forgot a trowel. Luckily, I left one out. Hashtag gardener problems. So, um, let's also get a kneeling pad. <clears throat> so we're getting all the things ready. We're wanting to plant everything right now. And I'm a little worried that if I plant, oh, look at my greenhouse, by the way, to the gills, to the gills. I started more seeds yesterday. I don't know what I'm thinking. I'm just excited and happy. But so it's really warm at night. And I'm thinking of planting my tomatoes and my peppers early. Would you guys take that gamble? Oh, I gotta put my hair up. The bees are out too, I forgot. If you don't have long hair and you have never had a bee, if you are lucky enough to not well, that's exactly why I have to put my hair up. Uh, I just got dive bombed by like two giant carpenter bees. And while they don't hurt you, they can't hurt you. Um, well, they can hurt you. They get stuck in your hair, which my hair is gigantic and not good when full of bees. <laughs> I just, uh, I've had too many times where, let's put you down. I've had too many times where bees have gotten stuck in my hair and I just don't play that game anymore. Does anyone else? Bees are always in their hair. I mean, I love bees. I bring plants as many plants as I can to bring the pollinators around and they still, mostly carpenter bees. Honeybees leave me alone. We used to have carpenter bees in our shutters for like seven years. I think I talked about it on the last video, the garden tour. 
Ugh. So anyway, what I'm doing now is um, I wanted to have a chat with you guys about, um, well, first of all, I'm in my new garden space, my white garden. So I've called it now a couple times. And um, so that's its name, the white garden. And I am planting some things that I ordered. I ordered um, some old fashioned white bleeding hearts, which is, um, this is what it looks like when it comes with bare roots. It's Dicentra spectabilis. Um, so I will be planting those here. I also got a white um, Japanese ghost fern. So I will, I got these off of springhillnurseries.com. I'll put a link down below for you. So these are uh, hopefully gonna do well here. I amended this area and raised the ground up considerably. And this is where our new walkway is also gonna be. So I'm hoping that by planting it in the compost and doing all those things that it will be a very happy plant. I'm also planting some white feather hosta and um, so I have those soaking. But I wanted to take a minute and talk to you guys while I'm planting um, about cicadas because as things are warming up, as the ground is coming to be much warmer, it's gotta be up to 65 for cicadas to come out and that's gonna be happening soon. We, uh, we're gonna see them and apparently this is brood X brood 10 which is a big brood it's a big um apparently the uh eastern seaboard is it's oh look at this worm what a glorious worm i wish the kids were here do you guys go worm hunting look at that little worm yeah go back to the soil little guy anyway so as the soil warms up to 65 degrees these brood X cicadas are going to come out and I've been seeing a lot of talk about how people are scared that they're going to ruin their gardens, they're going to destroy their gardens, all of that. And that's not what happens with cicadas. And I wanted to just take a minute and talk to you about that. So this, this um, particular cicada group is going to be pretty bad in our area. And when the cicadas come out, they, you will see these holes in the ground. The holes in the ground, if they don't fill up in a day or two, you wanna, you wanna fill those up. Because otherwise, yellow jacket queens try to make their nests in there and you don't want that at all, at all. Um, well, that's nice. I have like two more bleeding hearts. I'm gonna put them right here. So it's gonna warm up to about 60, the ground has to warm up to 65 degrees, which happens in April and May. Those are the two months that the cicadas will be coming out and they will leave these holes in the ground. If it's raining, then they'll have the whole plug. It's very interesting to see um, the, the plug come out. And what will happen is they will go to a tree after they shed their body and they look pretty wicked, of course. Um, big buggy eyes and all. They can't hurt you. They're not going to hurt you. They're just big and they're not like a carpenter bee. But um, they can ruin some plants and they're not going to go after your tomatoes. They're not going to go after your beans or peas. They're not going to go after your flowers. Everything like that is absolutely fine. But they will go after blueberry bushes, anything woody. So azaleas, all of my azaleas in the front will have them, I'm sure. Oh, yay. Um, all of my blueberry bushes, my raspberry canes that I'm planting, um, my apple tree, my cherry tree, all of those woody variety um, will have the, the, the cicadas on them. And the female will land on a tree and she will plant her eggs. And cicadas don't live long, so it happens pretty quickly even though they all come out at different times. But anyway, so you wanna cover those plants. You wanna cover 
your woody varieties. Any tree, oh, speaking of cicada, here we go. Here we are, one right here. The, uh, the man of the hour. So you will want to cover anything that's really young, anything that is two, three, four years old, um, because that's what, that's what the, when the female cicada lands on the tree and lays her eggs, the eggs will then fall off of the woody tree or shrub and burrow into the ground and consume the roots. And so if your plant is too young, it's gonna die. It's just gonna die. And so you don't want that to happen. You put in too much, too much time, too much effort. But um, it's gonna happen. The cicadas are gonna come out and that's my PSA for you. <laughs> so I'm gonna plant these other two hostas and then um, I'll take you along the rest of my day with, so you can see what we're doing. We're putting up our tomato trellis, I think. And then I'm going to have to decide whether or not I'm going to plant them. I don't know. What do you think? So what you just saw was me pounding in the tea posts. We are putting up our trellises today. It is tomato trellis day and we um, got uh, the information off of Roots and Refuge with their cattle panel art. And everyone's kind of been doing a, a lot of it. I think Whispering Willow Farm also has a video on it if you want to take a look. But so we are just going through and because we live in <clears throat> suburban environment, we don't have long beds that uh, can accommodate a 16 foot long trellis. Uh, or panel out like this. So what my husband's doing is now is he is just cutting them to the correct length. He is um, making sure that they are both approximately eight feet long. And um, we are going to affix these to the T-posts with zip ties, but we'll have, let me show you while he's finishing that up. <clears throat> Whew, it's a, breezy 75 um so the t posts are in we're gonna have two going lengthwise um let me show you the other way so this is what it currently looks like we're gonna have two going this way with airflow in the middle no plants there and then we'll have a line of tomatoes and a line of tomatoes on either side on the outside currently radishes and then these two t posts are going to hold uh, a trellis that's going to go this way as an arch. So if we're able to get all of that done, then I will make sure to show you it at the end. to finish out this video um we got all of the things all the trellises done and put into place i've now showered and cleaned up a little bit um so i wanted to just walk you in so you can take a look um these flower boxes my husband made will be housing my jacob's coat climbing roses um hopefully soon he wants to stain the fence and stain them before i plant the roses but girl's got a plant <laughs> so um don't know why I got stuck on the cement there um let me just show you my beautiful vision now that it's that it's bones are in can we talk about that just for a second how beautiful this is where I get to walk in to my garden in the summertime. This is my cherry tomato trellis. I hope I've done these trellises 
I, I feel like I have. It's not rocket science. And Jessica and Maya, Jess and Maya were very specific about how to do this. And I feel like I've done, we did a great job. Um, to me, those still aren't quite ready to go on them yet. So I still have some time, but look beautiful space down the middle. I am just so excited. And I still have lots of room for my potatoes and my blueberries. Um, they're always in the shade now. And all of the plants. Now I'm leaving all these plants out tonight. It's supposed to be in the 50s. It'll be fine. Um, I think it'll be good to go. Um, we've got our bean trellis that I'm going to plant out soon. And our second bean trellis and our pea trellis that's already planted and the green stalk in this beautiful position right now with the sun.